Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 now I told you when we started chapter 5 this is the modernist Bible one chapter where they run where they love and enjoy now th verse 13 we pick up the modernist Christian and if you've ever done any kind of public ministry outright and for surely it is known what you're doing whether you're preaching or, or talking so you're going to hear someone say well I let my light shine and when they say when I speak preach they come up, I let my light shine I said but do you ever tell them you're a Christian you ever tell them of Christ even the devil has a light Lucifer the Lux beer Satan is, 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 is an angel, transforms himself as an angel of light. I let my light shine. Huh? You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, where shall it be salted? It's henceforth good for nothing, but cast out and to be trodden under men. All right, and you've heard this one be used by the church. And here's, you know, talking to the church. You know, you're the salt of the earth. All right, salt has three principles. It can be used for cooking, for cleansing, and for health. Salt can lose its savor. Now, salt doesn't go bad. Natural salt. But salt can absorb smells and taste that can ruin salt. And that's where Jesus is talking about the Savior. If the salt has absorbed a flavor or a smell, and you go put it where you, you, you want to use it, it's like you ever gone somewhere a fast food restaurant and you ordered a meal and you could tell that that fryer was used for other than french fries or whatever you ordered it's got another taste to it salt well look what it said you are the salt of the earth are we to be earthly earth is a piece of ground Clearly speaking, the Jewish people Adam, the old nature, was a man of the earth. And will return back to the earth. But if you're a new creature, you're in Christ. You haven't been born of the earth, you've been born of the spirit. Salt I said it, it's it's for cooking, it's for cleansing, for health. And I, somebody would say, well, you know, you're the salt of the earth. I would try to say, okay, yeah. I'm the kind of salt that you rub in a wound and make it burn. Well, you know, that's not what they're talking about. They're talking, you know, you, you have a good taste, you have good benefits. Yeah, but if you put salt if you soak in salt water, sometimes it burns. Sometimes you need that good burning for a healing. But the problem is the white substance today in the churches is sugar. And ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick they may give light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We are early on in the ministry of Jesus Christ talking to the Jews. 
So people say, well, you know, I let my light shine. And they're talking about, you know, look at the good things I do. To which I will rebuke. Say, well, kind of funny. I thought Jesus Christ was the light of the world. And if you're using, I let my light shine for my good works. Don't you see the good things I do? Is that a means of salvation? Or is that a mean because you are saved? There's a big difference. If it's a means of salvation, you're going to burn in hell where there's no light. If it's because you're saved, because you love God, because you love the things that God's done for you in Jesus, okay. Faith without works is dead. But if you're running to Matthew, there's no church age here. Now, you can spiritually apply salt and light. But doctrinally, you got a problem. Ye are the light of the world. Have we not been told as Christians throughout the New Testament, after the death and burial and resurrection of the world, we're not to be of the world. We're to be outside the world. We are to be a spectacle to the world. We're not of the world. We're not to love the world. And the problem, I let my light shine. Okay, are you a natural light of God or are you an artificial light of man and Satan? Because there's two lights. Now, light is good for photosynthesis, light in plants. It's good for vision. Light will show you things. It's for good for growth and sleep. You say, well, what's sleep? You get vitamin D from the sun, and vitamin D helps you sleep. Each. It's for drying and evaporating water. It's for sanitizing the earth. The light properties of living things on the earth and non-living things on the earth helps clean the earth. Algae. It's for temperature. It's for health, like salt. It's for communication and signaling. A lighthouse. Navy ships would use a light. The single other ships, Morse code. Uh, a good uh, Boy Scout would carry a, 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 a mirror in his pocket with a compass. Casey's got to try to get communication with somebody else. And it's for sterilization. Now, ye are the light of the world. But if you don't witness, you don't preach the gospel, you don't hand out gospel, you don't present the light of the world, Jesus Christ, you're sure not a godly light. And again, Satan has transformed himself to be a, a light. The world has artificial light. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Now this reference is not the church. Because the church is not a city. And there's a quite possibility that this reference is to five, because it says a city, not the city. It could be five of the six cities of refuge. Six cities of refuge, five of them were on top of a mountain, so you knew exactly where that city was where you had to run to. The other one was built out in a plain. It could be New Jerusalem itself. I said not New Jerusalem. It could be Jerusalem itself. Jerusalem, the temple made in all in gold, was was a sparkling bright.
Neither do men light a candle and put it on a bushel. That's a box. That defeats the purpose. And yet for many Christians, they'll get saved and they'll put Christ in a box and not let him shine. They'll let their pastor shine. They'll let their church shine. But they won't let Christ shine. And Christ is the light. But on the candlestick. That's where candles go. That candlestick is an object. A candlestick is an object. Solomon had ten of them. In the temple, in the holy place. And then you go to Revelation, that the candlesticks in Revelation 1 does represent the church. But there's no church now. It giveth light unto all that are in the house. Well, Israel is mentioned as the house of Israel, the house of Jacob. The Christians are told to go to all the world and preach the gospel. And there's many Christians who want to keep the light in the church. And, and you, you get in a public ministry, you'll have to keep it in the church house. No, that's not what the Bible says. That's not what it says. Keep it in, a, and it's funny. I said you don't put it under a box, but you keep it in the house. Let your light so shine before men. Okay, men are to see who you are and what you are. You know, you can't, you know, be known, you go to church on Sunday and live like the devil at work Monday through Friday. That's an artificial life. How about let your light so shine before men? How about let your light, how about if you put the reference to Jesus Christ? Your light, not you being a light. How about, and we want to put to the Christian, how about Christ in you? And the only good works you have is because you're saved. Because you've got the, the Holy Spirit in you and the fruit of the Spirit. Because your flesh has, you know, the, the, the adultery, the murder, the, the cussing, the, the, the lying, the stealing, the bad-mouthing. That's the works of man. The good works is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. And in order to glorify God, you've got to do what the Word of God says. You can't go parading around, I let my light shine, I let my shine. Have you told anybody this year about Jesus? I brought it. No. I invited him to church. That's not what the Bible says. Have you done something for someone else without your gratification? Have you helped and aided your enemy? Have you shown love and care 
to someone in your church because those are Christian principles found in the scriptures. John speaks often about loving the brethren. Have you overlooked that troublesome one in church, whatever attitude you have? Have you helped someone in your church? Have you been a blessing? Have you told someone about Jesus and saving grace? That is what pleases the Father. And going up to someone who's doing what the Bible tells them to do and telling what you're supposed to be doing and using the excuse, well, I let my light shine, trying to rebuke the person from doing what God wants you to do, that doesn't please the Father. And there are people that run around of a religion called Catholic trying to please their father priest and the Pope, but it says, Father which is in heaven, that earthly father that you call father of your church, he's not in heaven. And probably most likely, the odds are against that when he dies, he'll go to hell rather than heaven. We see salt, light, in a city. The first city in the Bible was built by Cain, a murderer. We find the very first tower written in the Bible was for man and religion to get to heaven without God, not seeking God. So is that what you're bringing? Wait, I let my light shine. Is it artificial? Is it after Satan? Satan? <laughs> Because if I come across a Christian that is doing some kind of work of the Bible, of God for Jesus, I've never heard him say, I'm the light of the world. I let my light shine. They will usually say, you know, I go knock on doors, I use the gospel tracts. Or... That's how they say they let their light shine. And it's not to be hidden. There are people who will leave the assembly of their church during the week. And they'll tell no one. They'll say nothing. Nobody knows. And Christ, the light of the world, is inside that box. And he don't come out of that box by that person until he enters the church door next Sunday. Say, well, well, who would light a candle and put it under a box? Uh, many, many, many churchgoers. Some of them are Christians. Some of them are saved. It's called denying. Because we'll put Jesus in a box if there's a possibility I can get a promotion. Or if I can make the team. Or if I can keep my friends. But again, we're in Matthew. Matthew is a Jewish book of a king. And you see this reference to this flame over and over. We're going to see soon, we're going to see a reference of virgins and oil lamps and no oil and oil. And, you know, they run right to, that's the Christian. No, it's not. Israel as a nation is to produce the light of who Jehovah is. We as Christians, we are to 
eliminate, I mean, eliminate, illustrate who Jesus is, the Word. Now you can't say you're a salt, light, or the city. When you violate Matt, uh, Mark, go in all the world and preach the gospel. You can't say it when you violate the Christian commandments, and there are Christian commandments. And you can't proclaim to be the light of God, approved of God, when you're living like the devil. Because 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 11, look at verse 14. No marvel of Satan himself is transformed into an angel. Which light are you? And you can't be both. You can't be a Sunday light and then have a, you know, a Monday through Saturday light. 